Is Harris gaining momentum in the Sun Belt swing state of Arizona? This is Kotel, and let's talk some politics. Turning to the southwestern state of Arizona with its 11 electoral votes, it has, in recent history, voted for the GOP in presidential elections. But President Biden was able to narrowly win the state in 2020. However, much like Georgia, while Biden was in the running in 2024, it appeared that this state was moving beyond the Democrats' reach this election cycle. This appears to have changed, though, with the replacement of Biden at the top of the ticket with VP Harris, and she seems to have gained some momentum in this state. Per my previously established practice, I'm going to look at a series of polls and the shifts that have occurred in their survey results before and after Biden's exit for the state of Arizona this time. The polls that I look at are The Hill Emerson, Bloomberg Morning Consult, The Cook Political Report, The New York Times Siena College, and Rasmussen. Now, with that being said, let's get into the numbers for Arizona. Starting with the registered voter polling by The Hill and Emerson, in June they found Trump ahead in the race over Biden 47-43. to 43. In the polling in the days after Biden's withdrawal, their new survey results showed Trump gaining two points to move up to 49, while Harris gained only a single point, reaching 44, reflecting a gain by Trump by a single point, well within the margin of error. However, once more, this survey was conducted in the immediate aftermath of Biden's withdrawal, as the elevation of Harris was not yet a certainty. Next, we have the Bloomberg Morning Consult, also a RV poll, over the July 4th holiday. In that survey, they found Trump at 48 against Biden with 45. However, the poll they conducted at the end of July found Trump losing a point, landing at 47, with Harris surging to 49, a five-point gain over where Biden had been in the race earlier that month. Our first likely voter survey is by the Cook Political Report, with their polling in early May having the race in a dead heat at 45 for Trump versus 44 for Biden. Their survey, though, from the 26th of July to the 2nd of August saw Trump going up a point to 46, but VP Harris vaulting ahead of him by gaining four points to land at 48, representing a net gain for her of three points over Biden's standing. The NYT Siena College likely voter survey from early May had Trump with a commanding lead over Biden, 49 to 43. However, their poll from the 8th to the 15th of August saw a massive swing, with Trump falling to 45 points versus Harris and an astounding 50. This reflects an 11-point swing for Harris, by far the most pronounced change that we have seen from any pollster for any state I've looked at so far. Finally, we have Rasmussen with a likely voter survey, first with one from mid-June, which showed Trump ahead of Biden 47 to 40. In the most recent poll from this examination, though, from them, they have Trump sustaining his base at 47, though with Harris closing the gap to within two points, with 45% support among respondents, a five-point gain for Harris. So we have a bit of a mixed bag here. Let's start with a quick look at our two outliers, the Hill Emerson and the NYT Siena. Regarding the Hill survey, they have an excellent track record the past two election cycles of predicting well within their margin of error for the state of Arizona. But I do think that the proximity to Biden dropping out and the uncertainty in those early days for Harris may have impacted the respondents for their survey. On the other hand, the swing shown by the NYT Siena seems way overpronounced and out of step with the other pollsters. For context, they did overestimate Biden's support in Arizona by six points in the 2020 election cycle, which, if accounted for, does bring it into line with the other polls. It does appear that Harris has gained about four points compared to President Biden in the state of Arizona. However, once more, this has only brought about a razor-thin race well within the margins of error. It is worth noting that for the most part, Trump has either generally maintained his level of support or even gained more vote share with Harris's entrance into the race, with the main exception being the NYT Siena survey, which shows a substantial drop in his support. Consistent with Pennsylvania and Georgia, it seems that Harris's gains in Arizona come mostly from undecided or third-party supporters. And once more, as of right now, it appears that voter turnout and organization may be the deciding factor. However, we do have a number of events in the upcoming weeks, such as the debates and the sentencing of Trump in the New York case, which may shake up the race. But what do you think? Has Harris gained enough? to place her in striking distance within Arizona to repeat Biden's victory in the state? 
And is there anything that can shake the floor of support for President Trump? Did you find this video helpful in understanding the polling shifts? Let me know what you think in the comments below. This is Kotow, and thanks for watching.